In this uh, video tutorial, we're actually going to uh, go over the workflow of uh, moving a model between Maya and Rhino. And we're going to just go over this, this basic workflow so that you get used to moving between the programs because as we state many times in our course, we don't really care about programs. We're more concerned with um, file formats. We want to take advantage of some of the uh, polygonal model capabilities found within Maya that we can use to produce models for 3D printing and um, STL file conversion. So let's go over some of the basic workflows. So we're going to start with this model and I'm going to um, add a mesh uh, smooth to this model and uh, I'm going to come over here to the poly smooth face, and I'm going to add, uh, I'm just going to use one division, it's fine, that's, that's fine for right now. And I'm going to select the model, and I'm going to do a control, control C, copy, and I'm going to do a control V, paste, so I have a duplicate of the model. And I'm going to take this model, and I'm going to do a, 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 some work on it, so I'm going to make sure that my Key faces together node is turned off here. And one of the uh, tools that we often use uh, when we're modeling is uh, using uh, extrusions to add details to our models. And so I'm going to pull up my um, extrusion tool here. And I'm going to do a scaler on my faces locally. I'm going to scale down a bit here like so. And I'm going to actually delete the faces so that I produce a mesh. Now I'm going to go in and select that once again, and this time I'm going to go back to my edit mesh and I'm going to keep my faces together so that this time when I do the extrusion it does a global extrusion I'm going to walk this out on the z-axis. I could also use my offset tab here to do it, and I'm going to work visually because sometimes in Maya it's nice to work visually. And so now uh, the model actually has thickness which means it's no longer a surface, which means that it's good for 3D printing. And I'm going to select that surface now, and I'm going to add a, um, a smooth modifier uh, to that surface. And I'm going to click that again. I'm going to come over to this Poly Smooth Face 2, uh, and I'm going to add two divisions to that one so that I get this model that looks like so. And now I'm going to take, um, select both of these, both of the models, and I'm going to hit Control G to group them together into one node. And I'll get a scaler, and I'm going to globally scale it down and use my F key to bring it into focus. And as I look at that, let me go into my orthographic world. And you know that our basic. Um, unit, we, we wanted to do like a 4x4x6, four by four by so I'm going to scale this up a little bit. And I'm going to work intuitively. I'm going to scale this up so that that's 6 inches, like so. And I notice that here, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 inches. I'm going to scale that down a little bit there. So I'm going to scale it to 4. Okay, so it'll be a little bit different, and I'm going to use my W key to sort of move it and center it uh, about the origin and if I wanted to I could uh, rotate it so that it's facing like so. Okay, And so now I have a model that uh, I'm ready now to bring into that I'm ready to now to bring into uh, Rhino okay and to and to create a STL file from it so one of the things that I can do I'm gonna select uh, my object and I'm gonna do a file export selection and I'm going to uh, go down here and make sure that my OBJ export is selected and I can hold this right here and you can see some of the files that you can export and I'm gonna export two types of files here. I'm gonna export an OBJ version of it and I'm also going to export an STL version of it, okay? Um, and I'm going to call this uh, toroid. Underscore model. 
and I'm going to export it as an OBJ file. Okay, and as we know that um, one of the ways, uh, and I'm going to pause this while it does. Okay, and you notice that as I look at this model, I still have my quads. You know, and I love quads, okay, but we know that STL is a triangulated mesh format. So I'm going to select this again. And I'm going to do a file export selection. And this time I'm going to export it as an STL file. And I'm going to call this one toroid model also. And I'm going to export that one, but that one's going to be in, in uh, STL format. We'll be able to look at both model formats when we bring them into Rhino. So let me pause this while. Okay, now we're within um, the Rhino program. And let's uh, st start a new file. It's always a good idea. And we're going to do small object inches, which is the most popular mention that we use. And now we're going to import some files into Rhino. So let's do a file import and I'm going to uh, okay now that we're back in um, uh, Rhino we want to um, I'm going to import in some models. And I'm going to import both of these models. First let's do the um, the OBJ file, the toroid model and we're going to leave everything as it is. Okay, so here's our model in Rhino that we created. This is the OBJ version of our model. Okay, and as you can see it's composed of two skins. So if I take this one and let me change the object layer to that layer and let me go in here in the properties and also make that red you'll see that there are actually two shells here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a um, I'm going to select the interior shell and I'm going to run a check on that shell to see if it's a good mesh and that's a good mesh. Okay, and I'm going to select the exterior shell and I'm going to run a check on that and that's also a good mesh so I know that my meshes are good, that they are formatted properly uh, for, um, for 3D printing. So I can close this and let me center this now. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my default layer and I'm going to just group these together now that I know that each is okay. And so that's a group. Okay. And so so I can select it to so move it and not have to worry about it uh, changing in any way. And now I want to just check its dimensions and let's go through And You often have to do that when you move from Maya to Rhino. And I want to put a bounding box around it. So that's going to provide a really good way for me to extract the dimensions from the model. Okay, and I have this bounding box around my model. and I'm going to turn on my end snap, make sure that that's turned on. I don't need my point, center, or intercept snaps here. And now uh, with that done, I'm going to go up to dimensions, linear dimensions. I'm going to snap this like that, like that. So that's 10 inches right there. I'm going to come over here like that. That's 11. And let me go to my um, front window. And let's bring up all my windows here. I'm going to go from here to here, and I'll pull that out over here by 7. So it's 10 by 11 by 7, which is a little bit too 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 large for the window. Um, and we're trying to fit our models in initially in approximately 4 by 4 by 6 window. So I'm going to delete all of these elements here for right now. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to do a global scalar. Start from the center and I'm going to move this in. And my widest dimensions here. 
So I'm going to make that my 6 inch dimension. Scale this again. That's approximately 6 inches. And this is uh, now. Um, come over here, or I could just right click that. That brings all of those up there. And I've got one, two, three, four, a little over four there. And in my height, I'm at one, two, three. So I'm going to leave it here at this size. And now I'm going to go back and get my bounding box command. And I'm going to hit enter. And so that now, there, go dimensions, linear dimensions. 5.98, 5.25, and I'll come over to my perspective window, and I'll grab this dimension here, go to my right window, pull that out like so, and those are the general dimensions of the piece. It's 5.25 by 3.74 by 5.98. Those are the dimensions of the work. So that'll give you a sense of the final dimensions of the piece. And with that information, you can take this, put on another layer, come back here. We're going to hide that. We'll add the bounding box to that layer. And now we're ready to output this. Okay? And uh, we'll follow the same uh, procedures as we did before. We can do a file, export selection, and uh, we're going to um, export this as an STL file, and we're going to call this toroid. And we're going to save this. Okay. And I want to do a comparison here. Let's do a file. Import. And we're going to import our toroid model. Okay. The STL version of this. And let's slide it over. And the difference that you'll see between the two is that the OBJ version is captured in quads, but as you can see, the toroid version has the, uh, uh, the STL version is triangulated. Okay? Now, I want to do, um, and the, the last thing that I want to do, I want to take a look at the STL file that we created in Maya. I note that we're going to have to change the scale because the scale's off for some reason. Uh, but let's see, and I'd like to compare uh, what the Maya triangulated version of this model looks like. So I'm going to load that in. And let me load in that toroid model. And it's going to be larger than these its scale was slightly larger. Let me pause while it loads this in. Now I've loaded in the toroid model that we output as an STL file from within uh, Maya. Let's group these together. And you'll note that those two, the one that was created in Rhino, the one that create, was created in Rhino, are fairly similar. But the added advantage that we get from actually producing uh, our uh, STL model from within Rhino is that we can dimension it uh, properly. Um, Maya is not the most elegant program when it comes to holding exact CAD uh, dimensions, which is all important when you're doing digital fabrication and you're preparing files for 3D printing. And we'll stop this here, and we'll pick up uh, and add some content to this topic as needed.